All right, in the previous step of this tutorial Tech Byte series, we've created our AppGyver application. We've put a little user interface on it, and we've even been able to wire that up to use the camera of our mobile device to scan a barcode. And we've popped that barcode value up on the screen to test and make sure that it works. But now we really want to use that barcode uh, output to call a public API. So in this step, that's what we're going to do. We're going to begin to pair the call to our public API and wire that into our application as well. So we need to start by adding a data resource to our application. All our API calls, REST, OData calls, they're all going to be data resources. And we can do that by going to the data folder here at the top of the AppGyver designer. And we'll see that currently our application doesn't have any data resources defined in it. Uh, you see there are different types of data resources, connectors, file uploads for data. But we want to call uh, an interactive API. So we're just going to add a new data resource. And then it's going to list the different types of data resources from client-side storage to REST APIs to OData. Uh, and, and then others, a lot in the SAP space, I imagine that you're going to run into are REST APIs and, and OData services. Uh, but for this uh, sample, uh, we want to choose uh, REST API. And then our REST API, we're going to configure this. So our resource ID, we're going to say open food facts. And we can give it a description data from the open food facts API. And then the URL, so HTTPS world open food facts.org API version zero. And this is a nice API to use for educational purposes. It doesn't uh, require um, authentication. Uh, so it keeps things simple for, for getting started learning, but also has some, uh, you know, a pretty cool amount of data that's available out there. So let's go ahead and save the definition. And now we can, can begin configuring how to get records, an individual record of data out of here. So what we want to do is we want to see, we want to use a get, but a get a single record at a time instead of a collection. And then we can adjust the URL. It's not just um, slash ID. What we want here is we want to do product. And then we want to take the value from our barcode and send that in. Okay. And now we can go here to URL placeholder and we can change the value here the label to barcode and the key it is named barcode it is text you can give a description it doesn't really matter it is encoded um, it is not static and it is optional Actually, I think it doesn't make sense for it to be optional, even though it says that in the text. I'm going to uh, say it's uh, not optional. It wouldn't make any sense to call a single record without it. And then we can come here and we can test the API call right from within the tool as well, which is really nice. And instead of uh, uh, a text, what we're going to say here is, yes, we want to test with just a static text. And then we can type in a value here. And let's just use the sample from the tutorial 64164530611361. And, and we can run test. It's calling the API. And what we should see, if you type the number in correctly, uh, you should see that this is a piece of candy. 
not exactly sure what type of candy this is, some sort of licorice uh, candy. I'm not, uh, I don't think I'm familiar. Uh, yeah, it's a European candy, evidently. Uh, so I'm not uh, personally familiar with it, but it, it did what we wanted to do. We give it a barcode number, um, a unique product code, and then it went to this uh, food database and it looked up the all kinds of information. Uh, far more information than what we really need. But now that we have a response from the test, we can say set schema from response, and that's going to allow AppGyver to pull in all the metadata about the service by looking at a sample response. And we're not going to have to, you know, define the service interface. It's inferred it automatically uh, by looking at that sample response. And if we go ahead and save that, that's going to be part of our uh, data resource configuration now. And you'll see in the next uh, in the next step of the tutorial, how nice that is when we begin wiring that into our user interface. At this point, we have an API definition. We have the metadata about the, the response object that will be returned from it. We have everything we need to now wire that service call into our barcode scanning, which is what we're gonna do in the next part of this tutorial.